بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله على رسوله الكريم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال منشن المرء على دين خليلي فلينظر احدكم من يخالف وكما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام what is explained here is that many a time in life me and you as we grow up when we were small child every child it looks for someone to say something so a time comes you get irritated with the child but the child just wants you to say because the child knows that i don't know i want to learn so you will say example phone and the child will say phone i want you to say it again so you can get it so there's a time in life where the child understands that as long as i ask someone i will enjoy and then the person above who's teaching the child he becomes irritated so the child looks for attention and the one who can give attention is not bothered then comes the time where the child becomes the boss he becomes strong and he starts understanding that i don't need anyone to understand so it is at that stage in his life that he will now start making decisions when we will speak to students and we will ask them why you did this they will always say i want it so that is where this bayan is going to start that is it that you wanted or was it someone who showed you that's the whole thing as long as a person feels i'm the boss it is only right that you will do what you want but how much things you do which you really want and how much things you do because someone made you want it there was a time in life when everyone was proud to be a warrior of islam was the thrill to be riding on a fast horse to be having a spear a lance to know how to fight with the sword to be able to go out in the path of allah in jihad so if they said you are too young the young boy will get irritated they say i want to go out how dare you tell me don't go out he wanted to do it but what made him decide it was things that were around him. when the environment was pulling towards goodness he wanted to be the best of the good and then came a time which we saw when the khilafat was destroyed and the entire world changed so suddenly the mighty and the strong arab no longer was the mighty and strong arab now he wanted to be bob and tom now he took it to court his beard the girl took out her trousers she took out a scarf every muslim started feeling shy because i'm a muslim and they understood if i could be american if i can be british if i can just speak the language english at that time it was a big thing to learn english so big it was that i reached a certain place i just said something to the person he wasn't interested in the dawah he was so interested i know english so he told me forget what you told me how's my english and he started talking english so his english was not bad but not good also he said you not good in it why try but they had so much of fikr for english so even the man who could not talk the language there was a time when the british put up english schools all over the length and breadth of india pakistan when we went to pakistan you see every third fourth building english school just the name the language so now you have your inspectors you will make dora going round and round so he lands up at the school he wants the english test because they investing thousands billions so they want to see results so without warning the inspector will land up he says i've come to take a test so he enters the young class that poor boy his tongue is not the language it is if you try and do something which is not yours no matter how much you try you will never manage so the teacher wrote the inspector would write something on the board now that boy had been taught english according to phrases one phrase two phrase join the phrases so as he looked up the teacher wrote n a t u r e nature but the poor young boy what he knew nature so he said na thura so what else is going to say Yesterday the teacher was praising him but the inspector becomes irritated he's from England the teacher is from India world of difference so what natura yesterday was gold today it became sand so the inspector says say it again so he says natura so he looks at the teacher and he says what is this so the poor teacher he's not a man of the tongue so he says please forgive him he's not yet natura 
So you will write a complaint to the principal. And he said, I am going to report you all to the high commission. So they and there the principal says, there goes the fatura of the institute. The entire system of me and you, what we want to do, if it is what we were created for, the world will go unique. And if it is what someone told you all now to start doing, then the whole world fell. There was a time in the world if a girl walked out, even today she walks out. And from behind her, someone pulls her underpants. She got a trouser on. He just pulled her trouser. She will turn around and slap him. So how you did it? Why? She also understood my leg was not supposed to be shown. But that very woman, because of environment, the next second will enter into the bathroom. She's going on the beach. Now she will go in and take out everything. Now when she walks out, the boy will look, he says, I just had to wait one second extra. I only really wanted to see, let the, you showed me all. He said, what made you show me all and what made you slap me? She said, there you forced me. Here I'm doing it myself. But it's not that. There she saw the man who forced her. So she slapped him. And here she never saw the one who forced her. And that's what me and you are when we entered into a world which was called shaitani attraction, it was going to be an invite from someone we hate. If you want to understand what shaitan is, iblis is, go for a braai. That braai, when you put that fire, and now you say the coal is ready to be made, put on the meat, so you see no real fire. But in every coal is that fire. And then if one piece of flesh or that fat of the meat just falls, suddenly from that coal you will just see the fire grabs it. As that fire grabs it, that color, that look, that flame, if you want to see your shaitan, then light, hit the light, and you will see the red flame, you will see blue at the bottom. When Allah described the world of the jinnat in Quran, He described them like that. That the smokeless flame, now when you look at that flame of fire, look at it. And as if you see it going up and going up, in normal fire also you will see hatred and enmity. That as long as I'm far, I will give you a lot of warmth. Not because I like you, because I want you to come closer. That's it. As soon as you enter me, I'll grab you. So that very fire which was giving light in the house, it looks so, so, so... Harmless. It just needed one thing to come close to it and caught. Suddenly the man wants to run out of the house to see the fire comes in front. He turns this way, you see the fire is in the back. As it spreads, it goes around him. We went to fight the fire. We thought it was a small game. We said, there's the fire, we're heating it, we're heating it. Suddenly I found myself, I'm the only man and there's a fire around. So fast it comes. How I got pulled out? Up till today, I don't remember. Someone pulled me out. That day when we started coughing, it was just smoke coming from inside. So harmless, so harmless. But when that fire starts coming around, when shaitan makes a call, at the beginning it's a very smile. You are my friend, you. So on the internet there will be a call. It will be a newspaper article. Read this article. Suddenly on the side another article will pitch up. Suddenly you will be in America, you will be in Britain, you will be in France. There will be another article, another article, another article. I think the articles are coming for free. It is because there is a friend who is the worst of enemy, who will die, who will give his every and anything. When Allah Tawarukala cursed shaitan, at that time all he had to do was say that I am sorry, I will respect man. Adam Ali Salam was man. All he had to do was say, okay, I was acting stupid, I'll respect man. And he would have been vice president of Paradise. He hated me and you so much, so much, so much, that he said, I will burn forever and ever and ever, but I will never show respect to this man. That's your friend. When that boy pulled at that girl's trouser, the only thing is he wanted to see her. But he liked her. And when Shaitan said to her, take out your clothing, 
He never wanted to see her, he wanted to burn her. I hate you, in and out I hate you. But in hatred, sometimes I show my hatred. So you say that man is evil, but you don't say wicked. Wicked is the one who is a witch. And you will pull the small boy in. You will give him sweets, give him chocolate. As for you and me, there will not be sweets and chocolate, it will be temptation. And as the temptation comes, everyone gets tempted by something which is according to his own. Al-Maru ala deeni khalili, Rasulullah s.a.w. started, that every man needs someone to tell him, don't ever think you're making decisions for yourself. The only thing is, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ You will have to see who you made your friend. Because someone is your friend. The decisions you make, the clothes you wear. Why do I want to wear a branded jacket? Someone showed it to me. I never woke up one morning and I said, I want this jacket, daddy. There was an advert that put it, who put on that advert? Was there a man who said, I'm inviting you to a lifestyle? I'm inviting you to a walk. I'm inviting you to a talk. I will change you from the top to the bottom, not because you want to be, because I want you to be. Otherwise you ask a boy, keep here. So there is many ways of keeping here. And Nabi Wasallam loved long hair. And he was the parable of unique beauty. Every part of his body was on the sublime level of beauty. But for some reason, whatever was in his mode, in mine and your mind, is not handsome. The reason is because the world showed us something else called handsome. So we grew up understanding, if I got a beard in school, she won't marry me. That's why the boy will say, after I marry, I'll keep the beard. But you ask any person in the world, who got four wives? It's the Arabs, really. And they got massive beards. They always had four wives. As for me and you, how many letters I get, Marana, please make dua, this one goes through. He's had tea by so many houses, but not one yes. Tea is free. It's finished. She is finished. Sometimes I think the girls who not find him, tell her join the boy who is not finding, finish. He say, no, I don't want it. So many girls can't find, so many boys can't find. But shaitan put it in your mind, if you got no beard, you'll get the girls of the world. So suddenly there's no beard. Not because it's not handsome, because you never understood it as handsome, because someone taught you the meaning of handsomeness. You wanted to cut your hair, there was any method you could have cut your hair, but one of two things would have happened. You would have cut it in a style that would have said, my friend Muhammad وسلم showed me the style. Or you would have cut it in a style who you would have said, my friend Iblis showed me the style. As soon as you said Iblis, you would have understood there's something wrong with it. What you got to do with my hair? You are a man who got to work of the world. What of my hair? But that hair was so important that if that individual went to the Baba and he said, cut my hair according to my friend Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would be in a world which even the angel would say, wow. That in a time where everyone in the world is walking one side, he walked the other. So the angel will ask Almighty Allah, what this? Allah Tabarakullah will say, the servant of mine just on account of his hair looking like my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His morning and evening, day and night, second after second, as he moves, he will move under a selected mercy of mine. Why he looks like my beloved? That woman who lost her child when she was young, and she had extreme love for her child. So in the shop she saw another boy who looked like a child but was not her child. She even knew it's not her child. But for some reason she went and bought a present and she gave it to the mother of the boy. The mother said, for what? She said, it's the only way to make myself feel at ease. I had a son who looked just like your son. On account of his looking like my beloved, I have shown my love to him also. Just your hair becomes the hair of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Suddenly wherever you move, you in divine mercy. And that same very hair, shaitan will say to you, that you could have cut it like this, for me please make one extra cut. 
After you make that cut in the barber, when you sleeping, you don't see it. That girl in school who you did it for, she never saw it also. When you look in the mirror, you were the only person who perhaps thought, hey, that hair is there. Nobody noticed. There are some things no one notices. Hair, no one notices. More than that, there is sometimes underwear. A boy will go to a shop and he say, I only wear this brand. You ask me, what's the difference? It's not that the private part knows what is different. He says, the world says this brand is good. He says, but who will know what's under? How they going to know you made in China or made in America? But that brand is in his mind. If I wear this jockey, I'm a man. That's it. It's in his mind. So he'll cut one clip on his hair and suddenly he becomes that why couldn't you look like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the angel will ask Almighty Allah that will I write one sin for him for cutting that hair or what? So the answer will be that he is not looking like my beloved. This word lanat which comes in ahadith and Quran, it doesn't mean that Almighty Allah has to start sending curses upon him. Lanat just means the mercy of Almighty Allah stops falling. As soon as that happens, everything starts happening. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam was invited by a woman. The woman had beauty of extreme height. The area was conducive. She was like a mother towards him for so many years. She was the master. There was no deen in those families, there was no religion. Nabi Yusuf salam, when he came out, he said one unique sentence. He said, very, that only that man will manage to stay away from this temptation, who moves in the mercy of Almighty Allah. ma rahim rabbi. But where was that mercy of Almighty Allah? Sometimes that mercy would just be in the head. What a small thing, but shaitan said, I'll start with the head. In Quran, Allah Tawarqala spoke about unique plots of shaitan. Amongst those plots, one was the unique one. He said, how you created them, I will change them. I will make sure they will alter happily how you created them naturally. Because he knew once that happens, they are out of that shadow of Allah. Suddenly you start desiring, you start craving, you start wondering, you start getting thoughts. All it was, had you been in a mercy, perhaps you have been protected from a hundred things. But we lived in an era where all of us came out of that mercy. Soon as we came out, now the fire hit. When the fire hit, that a rajulu ala deeni khalili was still there. That a man will be on the religion of his friends. Watch who you make your friends. So a boy you are who suddenly started getting desires. Just yesterday you could ask your teacher, what does she say to a horse? She say, what's this dinosaur? Teacher, does dinosaur exist? She'll give her story. Everything you ask her, what's this, what's this? You'll come home and you say, mommy, what's this? Daddy, what's this? Then suddenly one night you saw a dream which you never saw before. That morning you found, hey, I'm wet. I don't think that day you went and said, hey, mommy, what's this? Suddenly you went quiet. Because now you can't ask. And the mother went quiet, although she saw it was mess. Because she was feeling shy. That day as you're walking, people are asking you, how is it? But you're already in a world now. You don't know what happened. And you don't know how to ask. You don't know how to ask because you're too shy. And you think you're the only one who experienced it. And if you have to ask anyone, you will ask your friends in school. When they are making a joke, they will say, you know how you were born? There was a time when I went amongst my friends and they asked me, how you were born? For years, I really believed a stalk brought me. Because my mother had told me, she felt too shy. So she told me there was a stalk. Then there was a time when I couldn't believe it. So she said, no, I bought you from the hospital. And it ended on that. So one day my brother told me, so I tell you, we're talking rubbish. They can't be doing this. So, so he just told me, but just don't tell them. 
And in the car as we driving, I must have said something and oh, my brother was shouting on his life. But how did they expect me to learn? They were just shy. But there was no big issue. The problem is the issues you face today, three quarters of it your parents don't even know. What you are going through, you really feel no one understands. And that is where the biggest problem falls. So you will go on Google to check out what's the problem, what's the solution. And you will read so many stories, but then a story will be true. You will want to get married, you will have to know what's happening on the first night. You will press something, you will see hundred things on Google. The only thing you don't want to ask is, can I go and ask a friend? Because which friend? He'll laugh at him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ar-rajulu ala deeni khaliri. Your entire understanding of marriage life will be according to your friend. If you meet Google and Shaitan your friend, he will show you a life which in the entire Shaitani world, the world of marriage collapsed. It's not standing. No person there is married. But you will still read what they are writing for a successful marriage. When you will approach your wife on the first night, what to do? You will feel so shy to go ask a friend, why? Then he laugh at me. But this is a unique thing of Islam where Allah Tabarakullah in Quran himself announced that verily Allah is not shy of the truth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained such things to the ummah that the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said we were ordered to explain delicate issues of the private life of Nubuwa so that the entire ummah will understand that Islam left nothing untouched. Because one day someone was going to give stories. It had to be an Islam who had said it's a lie. Who was going to pull out the lie? Ar-rajulu ala deeni khalili. If you can have a friend who can take you. I visited an area. What made me say it, I don't know. But I just said that there are many boys who fall in love with girls. So they also don't know how to control. And they really think that if I got a desire for her, it started in the school, I got a crush for my teacher, so I was feeling shy. And then I got a crush for the one next door. I got a crush for a woman 50 years my age. Now obviously I couldn't go and tell mommy that you know Nani, I love her. She would have smacked me. But I never knew what to do. So I started feeling that if I like that old auntie, it means I'm dirty in and out. Because you can't get thoughts like this. Because I'm dirty in and out, I stop going to the masjid. That the first stuff is not for me. I'm a man who if I have to tell people my thoughts, they will tell me, I think your iman is gone. So suddenly I went into a closed circle. I was shy because I really thought that my thoughts mean me. So the worse the thoughts, the worse I am. I went to school and the teacher said it in such a manner that when I came that night I started doubting does Allah really exist? Or if He is there, is my Allah fair or not fair? So suddenly that night I said, how can I perform nafal tahajjud? Because I don't even believe in you Allah. And I remained like that for five years, six years, seven years. Then suddenly one feeling came in me. All along I was desiring a girl. So there was always the chance of going home one day and saying, Mommy, you know what? I really want to marry Fatima next door. Problem came, a desire came within me that I'm not in love with Fatima anymore. I'm in love with Fatima's brother. Now I felt more in the picture. That I could tell my mommy, mommy, can you send a proposal for Fatima? But how will I go and tell her, can you send a proposal for Ahmed? At that moment, who will I talk to? Does it mean if I desire a boy, then I'm out of Islam? And if I desire my Ustad's wife, I'm out. One person goes from my madrasa. It's a lesson for everyone. Every Ustad also. Every Shaykh al also, every Alim also. He said, I fell in love with my Ustad's daughter. 
Now I don't know how to go tell him that you know what, I like your daughter. So suddenly he must be loved with it. Lucky I wrote, you fell in love with his daughter. What happened if you fell in love with his wife? That could also happen. Because the eye when it falls, Rasulullah said it's a poisonous arrow of shaitan. Hazrat Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib Rahmatullahi when we spent time with him, he was so open in this year that we were so happy. He started explaining to us feelings that a man gets inside. And does it really mean you bad or not? You got feelings for girls everywhere. You got feelings for boys which is totally finished. Haram. There is a time we are living in where we heard about the issue of the mahram. But we are living in the time where boys get desires for their mahram also. He got a desire for his sister. He got a desire for his niece. The only thing he doesn't know, can I say this to someone that will still give me one smack? Ar-Rajulu ala deeni khalili. Nabi Islam said, if you can find a friend, you'll hold your hand and say, what? Your story is so small. Come on, take care of it. This is a friend. If you find a friend, he will sit in front of you and you will come and say, you know, I think I'm a kafir. I think I'm an animal. I got the worst and worst and worst of desires. And the first thing you will say, that man will say, you know, sometimes in my thoughts, I doubt Almighty Allah. A friend will say to him, you get those thoughts. I also get those thoughts. He will get shocked. He said, but you smiling and I'm dying. You say, you got desire for girls, Lord. Then a friend will tell him, I also got desire for girls. For some reason, many young boys think Molanas and chefs don't like girls. That's why girls also don't make parada from us. Even if they come with a problem, we tell them in parada, for them we say, no Molana, you can see me. They really think that we got no desire. So sometimes I ask the question, how do you think our sons were born? You think first time we both put our hands, oh Allah, send the stock. There's desire. But when that man can tell, I also got desire in him. Hazrat Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib was unique in this. That he was not shy to tell us when we said by him, that Akhtar got desire more than all of us. He said, Akhtar is not shy to say to the world, that Akhtar burns with desire. And he says, it is this desire that made me reach where I reached. Suddenly our eyes open. We had never heard. We had never heard of Shaykh Morana saying, you know me, I also like to look that picture. I like to look at it even more than you like to look at it. So suddenly the boy's eyes will open. You also got thoughts. You also got desires. So how are you smiling? He said, I learned that within me, there is me also and there is shaitan allowed to move in me. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shaitan flows in you like blood. Blood is a unique thing, it's dirty and filthy. But as long as blood remains in the body, it can't harm you. Shaitan flows like your blood. As long as shaitan is allowed to stay in the body, and he does not show himself in your actions, he cannot harm you. Blood, you cannot stop it flowing. Shaitan, you can't stop it flowing. You try to stop your blood, you'll have an attack. You start fighting with shaitan, you'll finish your life. So what does it mean he can flow in me? Allah Taala allowed him to move in me with no visa. He can move in my heart and trouble me. Sometimes he can move in my legs. There's a boy who will come and say, every time I start my salah, I think my urine is running down. So I'll tell him that, do you wear underwear? He says, yes. I say, is the underwear wet? Put toilet paper. Now you come and tell me the toilet paper is not wet, but I can feel it. I say, your urine is unique. It goes through toilet paper. But he says, I really feel it. I say, that is shaitan tickling. And the only day he'll stop is when you laugh at him and say, I enjoy your tickets, carry on. You will perform that salah really feeling that urine moving. 
And you will tell him, carry on making me feel this. I'll read two rakat salah. Nice. After my two rakat salah, I will go and check up in the wuzu khana. If I feel there's a drop there, I will make wuzu and I will read another two rakat. But my first two, I will not cut it short. You will see the boy reading salah and his legs are moving. As his legs is moving, he's trying to stop a urine that's not there. Because shaitan, once he understood this boy is falling for me, grab him. That's the baby boy. There are the in the heart. In the heart he started giving thoughts. So your first thought was, is Allah fair or not? That me and my sister, we going to Jannah, I heard. But the pretty girl next door, white girl, I heard she's going Jannah. But she's such a nice girl. That's the beginning. Why she must go? So we even say to an alim, but her akhlaq is good. That akhlaq means that I want her. Suddenly shaitan says to her, that says to you, her face is so pretty, what did she do wrong? So that night you really asking Almighty Allah a question. But you're not happy about the question and you're asking the question. The world will say there's no such thing as a split personality. Nabi Islam said, a friend will show you. He will say to you, feel, ask yourself, are you happy with the thought or not? As soon as you say, I'm not happy, it means it's not you. Finish. But how do you live with it? You live with it, that is called sharh e sadr And it's a friend who will teach you. Sadr means your heart. Sharah means open your heart. How do you open your heart? There was a road that was only one lane. So that small mini in front was always going slow. I would hoot and hoot and hoot, you never want to move. Then they open the lane. When they open the lane, that small mini is still moving. But I just move on the side and I carry on my journey. When I got two lanes, then the traffic on one will never trouble me. In my heart, if I only allow two lanes, one is me to my Allah and one is O Shaitan for you. You come with the filthiest of thoughts, the dirtiest of desires, the worst and the worst, your lane is open. You will crave, you will desire, you will want to carry on. You will give me filthy thoughts, evil thoughts. I will just say that this is not my lane. How I know I'm feeling bad about it, finish, it's not my lane. You carry on on your lane, I will carry on on my lane. A man is delivering post, the dog chases him. If he looks at the dog, the dog will never leave him. If he walks, the dog will bark, bark, bark and then go trouble somebody else. Many, many people today, they are knocked with shaitan from inside because they started thinking, this is me. Their thoughts became so filthy that finally when they found no other solution, they wrote the first writing of the letter was that I am ashamed to say to you, the following. That ashamed to say to you the following, everyone writes the same thing. Because everyone got the same shaitan. How you come out of it? A friend will just tell you, open up one more lane in your heart. It will be so simple to pull out of a trap. The problem is you don't have a friend. That friend will say to you, let me take you in the world. I said, the only reason you're feeling shy today in front of your friends is because you see yourself and your friends only in Durban. But a friend will say to you, come I'll take you out. Let me give you a broad picture of the world and I will show you who you are. But you will need a friend to show you. The beginning starting of our friendship was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I will show you the whole world. And in that day he showed us the butts and the butts of the huge broad world. He said, this will happen before Qiyamah, this will happen before Qiyamah. Before Qiyamah you will see it going like this, you will see it going like that. The boy who was seeing it, he just saw it. But when a friend would tell him that I will tell you about it from on top. So now let's go up. Let us go in a majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now he's sitting there. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to tell us that do you think the land and the era you are living in did not open in front of the eyes of your Nabi? 
And do you think you were also not there? And do you think that the Ummah was the people of the past and you were regarded as the rubbish? Rather when you will see the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will say that you were actually the ones I worried about the most. Unique would be his narration. He would say, amazing is the matter of my Ummah, it's like rain. That when the rain comes, it will come so unique, so unique. That a person will not know what the first rain is unique or the last rain. But why the last rain? So let me put you in your error, taking you one step higher. There was a time when Shaitan really said, I am going to destroy this man. I am going to finish this man, cripple this man. Allah Tabarakullah said to Iblis, make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. He said, I won't. He said, just make a sajda. He said, I hate him. He said, I will destroy him and his entire progeny. And what he had said to the angels is, man, 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 is filth, rubbish, dirt. He is a man who loves his desire. He gives in to his desire. He will never be able to submit to Allah. At that time when shaitan spoke, he was the spokesman among the angels. Even the angels noticed him. So when he spoke, it was like a shock to the angels. And it was a challenge to Almighty Allah. The challenge was about you and me. What was the challenge from east to west, north to south? You will not find one individual who will be ready to say, Allah, Oh Allah, I love you. So Allah Tawarqullah said, okay, go in the world and prove it. East to west, north to south, not a single individual must be ready to make sajda to me. As he was going out, he would ask that you want any weapons to prove your point. Normally you give weapons when the capital is unique. When a father feels my son can stand up to any fitna, evil, he will tell evil, try my son, you will not manage. A father who really trusts his son will say to the drug dealer, go to my son, my son will make you a Muslim. Allah Tawarukala told Shaitan, I allow you to go unto my servants, because there is a group of my servants who I trust so much, that whatever power I give you, they will still remain standing. Quran speaks about it. A hadith goes into detail. At that moment, Allah Tabarukala, Shaitan only asked for one thing. He said, I want time till before Qiyamah, low time. So if I can't prove myself in 10 years, I got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, somewhere I'll prove it. Allah Tabarukala said, وَاسْتَغْزِزْ مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكْ Time I'll give you. I will give you things you never thought of asking. Number one, I will give you a voice. Your voice will manage to hit the entire world. You will go in the minds, you will go in the heart. But I want you to ponder of these verses. Because it was there that as time will go, your powers will increase. We are living in the time where the shaitani world is so, so scared of the revolution. That in the past they would hide their efforts, today they are not hiding. When the kings of the lands of Hijaz were evil, they hid their evil. Today they are not going to hide their evil anymore. Because they got a time level which is so little to prove their point, it's not getting done. They are going wild. Every day your one Allah Akbar shakes the entire world. He was told, I will give you sound, voice, وَاسْتَغْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكْ Whoever you can grab with your voice, I give you that voice. But throughout the errors, shaitan had to go individual to individual. Then there was a burst of technology from the time of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. Shaitan never enjoyed a voice as powerful as the voice today. Today in one second his voice comes to a person from 10 different avenues. He's on the phone, he's on the media, he's on the radio, he's on the adverts. Everywhere his voice is. There's a club taking place, there's a race taking place, music is pumping. Every shop got music. Even the one who doesn't want to hear it from outside. He goes in the bus, the radio is on. There was no radio in the past. Music wouldn't come into the house of the scholar, today it will come. He got a new phone, suddenly music will come. It will go in the haram, it will go in the masjid. 
The power of voice that he got today, he never enjoyed from the time of Adam al Islam. I will give you the power of voice, go out. Day and day you would have said sufficient. You give me a chance to make bayan to the world. In few bayans I've changed their whole mindset. Man istata'ta minhum bisawtik wa ajnib alayhim bi khaylik wa rajilik. Allah tabarakullah said forget voice. I will give you power of might. The armies of the world will be at your side. In the past it was horses. In the past it was animals. Foot soldiers and animals on conveyances are yours. Throughout history, shaitan enjoyed the mightiest of armies. But the power he yields today of supremacy in military, in life he never enjoyed. They have atoms which they can throw one down and the whole country is gone. They can kill millions and millions. World War I, World War II saw 50 million. That time they said perhaps a portion of the entire world population. One shaitani power said, I'll take you all out. Suddenly everyone fell in fear. You will have people who can come in tanks, they can come in jets, you'll be yours. The rest of the world will have to buy from you, you will be the power. So you can grab the individual, put him on the ground, say if you don't listen to me, don't give up, I will shoot you in the head and it's happening. We never saw it, go in Syria, go in Iraq, go in Afghanistan. Allah Tabarukullah in Quran says, they were not tormented and tortured for any crime except that they said, La ilaha illallah. That's all. That woman in the house doesn't know what crime she did. But because you are a believer, you will be raped, you will be cut into pieces, you will see your child boiled in front of you. Allah Tabarukullah said, I'll give you that power also. You can fall on the people, every man loves himself. But this Iman is so unique in you, that when that shaitani powers fall and they put a gun to the head and say, give me your money, the person gives it. But when they say, sell your iman, the person says, kill me. At that time, the entire world of angels get shocked. That when shaitan said, not a single one will say, oh Allah, I love you more than everything. Here is a woman who loves her child more than the world. And she sees the child being cut into pieces. And she knows she will be cut into pieces. She sees a whole family being shot in the head. At that moment she will also read, La ilaha illallah and call it. At that time the whole world shakes. You are also amongst that. You are one Allahu Akbar in a time where shaitan is asking the world, Worship anything but this Allah. Three quarters of the world worships themselves. It's called humanism. And that last quarter who left Christianity came into humanism. They started worshipping themselves. What I want is the most important. The next step they fell into Satanism. So they will go to a rave. The DJ will make bang bang. And suddenly a time will come and make one sign and they'll all fall in sajda. At that time that man will not be a DJ. But it is someone that behind him is a shaitan who is saying, You allow all my worship. Millions, if you take a picture of the club, you will see people prostrating in their thousands and thousands. But at that moment, do you think shaitan is thrilled? He is not thrilled. The reason is darkness does not spread upwards. It is light that spreads upwards. If the smell is off, you won't see it in the sky. But if there is a light, you will see it in the heavens. So that entire club will be dancing till Qiyamah death in Jahannam. It will have no effect above them. Next door there is a masjid. In that masjid a gathering took place. One man and ten boys. Allah Tabarukla in Surah Kaaf made special mention of this. That is was the era of total, total evil. And a young group of boys, small, they were not 10, they were not 20, they were not 30, you could count them on their fingers. A small group said, we will be different from the rest. So you tell the king of the time, what difference it makes to you? You partying, all who party, one boy in the masjid, leave it. But the king of the time had to call them, he had to threaten them, he had to warn them. You will say, what is he doing with you? What it is doing is, one boy reads Quran, Light moves in the sky. That will be seen in the heavens by the angels that look at that individual. 
comes in the hadith a house in which quran is red shines unto the heavens like the stars suddenly you are the unique man of the time wherever you move in the world you are moving with the light that light is like that aeroplane is looking at light thousands and millions are in sajda to shaitan not a single sign is noticed your one sajda to allah shakes the heaven that shaitan said there will not be an individual who will submit the angels will say subhanallah and you will be the focus of attention you are unique in the era but you never saw it because you just saw yourself you need a friend to take you a little higher that to see yourself from above where you move in the world the mountain will say today a man who says allah allah pass me oh mountain did a man like that pass pass you also the heavens love you the earth loves you it is only when you align allah tawarukullah cannot show you how valuable you are but you are that warrior that breaking every shaitan is sorry واجلب عليهم بخيلك ورجلك قال جبل ذا ملتري اوف ذا تايم وشاركهم في الاموال والاولاد او ان ميك يو ا بارتنر وذ شيطان ان ذا ويلت اوف ذا ورلد ات ذس ورس شيطان اولويز انجوي ذا ويلت اوف ذا ورلد ات واز هيز ذات از واي هو ايفر بيكم ذا سيتانس بيكم ذا ريتشست اوف ذا ايرا يو يو اوف روك سايل يو يو اوف روك فيلا يو يو اوف يو جوش جويش لوبيس If you want to ask them how did you make your wealth as a lie you say I invested here I invested here he invested into satanism He came the worshiper the bigger the worshiper the more you get but even he shaitan hates Many a person thinks that is this individual shaitan loves even that individual shaitan hates to the core There was a time when I had a dream In the dream I found myself in a rave. In that rave it was like the main shaitan. The beacon of evil. And he was calling his different puppets. So among the puppets, the biggest of the puppets, Rasulullah s.a.w. said on the coming of Tiyama close, it will be the woman who will be inviting. Nabi s.a.w. said two groups from the people of Jahannam I have not yet seen. He said that one group will be those women whose hair will look like a certain camel meaning wild it will be up it will have a style it will be brownish and tanned in color he said ma ilat mumilat they themselves will be inclined and they will be making others inclined how small that word was mumilat they will make others inclined to them You will wonder how one one woman will manage to make lot inclined to her. He was not speaking of one boy who say hey, I like you my girl. One woman was going to dance and the world was going to become inclined to her. Mumila. He said I saw that group and what a time Allah tabarakallah was showing Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the paragons of evil in your era. That pop star So in the dream that paragon of evil shaitan invites come you I will reward you for your service come you So in my dream I saw he invited a pop star she came front and now he starts dancing with her and the lights are on the club is carrying on and as they are dancing 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 then because now it is that she never do one thing she supposed to perhaps have done She had given her life for the shayatin but even her is hated by the shaitan that I will use you use you use you and the day I don't need you get lost So in the dream I see as he smiling to her smiling to her suddenly the smile changes to his reality which is nothing but I hate man you also man So suddenly he grabs her and her face changes and she says master did I anger you and it just becomes a smile of evil if you can remember this in your mind the next time you see felt inviting you see that smile she gave her life for him although it was a dream but this is the reality of the world they give their life to the shayatin and the day they no longer needed they dump like anything so in the dream that smile turns to evil and he just starts pulling her he grabs her neck or hair and he starts pulling her hair back and the whole body starts going backwards 
She's bending on her spine. As she's bending, she's saying, Oh Master, please forgive. What did I do? What did I do? And he's just pulling. There is no smile except of even. Even in the dream, I felt sorry for the woman. And as she screamed, then he just pulled her, pulled her until the whole spine snapped. And she just falls to the ground. Then in the dream, I just saw some people coming, gathered her up, they just cleaned a little bit there, and suddenly the party started. As though nothing happened. And just that smile. When I woke up, I said, what a world is this? Allah, Tawarukullah, I said, Ya Allah is faithful. And Shaitan is a liar. He hates. But how close you can come to him, he's just waiting to grab him. So Allah, Tawarukullah, I said, I'll give you the weapons of the world. Sharikum fil amwali, I will give you the wealth of the world. That person who enters into Satanism will move in a limousine. They will have the best life, the most richest life. They will be used by Hollywood, they will be used by Bollywood. Hollywood doesn't pay a million for no reason. It is because on your body we are going to pull millions into Jahannam. So we'll pay you that amount. Give your body. وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ I will give you the wealth of the world. Put up your structures. Put up your buildings. Put up your magic. There was a time when I was writing of shaitani magic. So I wrote one article. It's a long issue this year. Very fast we'll go into it. That from the time Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Dawah started, the masters of evil of the era and the people of every other faith knew what he's saying is the truth. So well they knew it even better than the people of Islam. So when a Muslim army would reach them, they would tell the Muslim army about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than the Sahabi knew even. He will say, you only met him today, I know about him from the scriptures. But the Sahabi will then get shocked that you know more about him than me. In the world we live today, they are priests and they are popes. They are shaitani men and shaitani women who understand what we have is the ultimate truth. The only thing is make so much shukr that Almighty Allah when He focused Iman and Islam, He never focused it on the one who knew about it. He focused it on the one He wanted to focus it. So me and you don't even know what we are. When Rasulullah Sallallahu sent his letters to the kings of the time, so in Hayat Sahaba two incidents are mentioned. He says it reaches the king of Rome, because Rome was the master of the world at that time. It was your America in Britain. So when the Sahabi brings the letter, the nephew will say, what a letter, tear it. Because he has started with his name before the name of the king, Caesar. He started from Muhammad the Rasul of Allah. The nephew said, we will not read this. The king of the Roman Empire said, we will read this. He knew it. As he's reading, three lines finished. In three lines, Nabi Sallallahu said, I invite you to Islam. We're not shy because we are the ultimate truth. And if you don't accept, then the son of all your people under you is on you. Easy, what a doubt. To the king and the master superpowers of the time. Because the tongue that talks Iman is not shy. The most you can do is kill me. So the Sahabi Rabi Allah says, I noticed what happened after. First they will call Uskuf. Uskuf is the biggest pope. When the Uskuf reads the letter, the king asks him, what is it? He says, I know about this and I believe in it immediately. So the king says, but if I believe in it, I'll lose everything. That's it. The Sahabi Dihya Kalbi radiallahu anh says, I went out. A while later, the Uskuf calls me, the spoke. He will ask me day after day about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will ask me about his life, where he came from, what he does. And every day I will see him getting happier and happier. Sunday came, he's supposed to go out to speak to the people, he never went out. It is Bayan day. He sends a message, I'm feeling ill. The following Sunday again he doesn't go in, the people are suspecting. By the third or fourth Sunday they say that from the time this Arab has come, our Pope is acting funny. So they send a message to the Pope, this Sunday you will deliver your discourse, otherwise we will take you and kill you. 
The Uskuf of the time, the Pope of the time, he says to Dihya Kalbi radiallahu an, that I want you to convey to your Nabi my salam and to say to him that I believe in him. And the only one thing I ask is you wait until you see what happens tomorrow. Whatever happens, you must say to your Nabi what you saw. So as he walks into the crowd and he reads, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. He wore white on that day also. He took his ghusl, he walked into shahada. He knew it all. As for the Caesar, he understood the great Pope accepted. But he's not going to accept. So he will write a letter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will put it in the hands of an Arab and he will tell him, you go there. Whatever you see of the man, you remember it. Look at the Caesar of the time, how he knew about the truth of Islam. Those rubbishes sitting in England and in America and in Russia and desiring the destruction of what they feel they can destroy Islam. One, one of them have yaqeen on our faith like how he had it. But it was one thing that Almighty Allah's gaze of mercy was not on him. And it's not on them. So you will get the wealth of the world, but Islam will not fall in your heart. So he says to the man, here's the letter, take it. When you will come to this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as soon as you put the letter in his hand, you must see if he makes mention of my letter. Of not my letter, of the letter he sent me. Because he sent him a letter. As soon as you put my letter, he will mention the letter he sent me. See what he says about it. So much yaqeen he must have had that in his books, it must have been written. When the Rasul of Allah sallallahu will come, the Caesar of Rome will write a letter to him. And he will give this answer on receiving the letter. That he also He said, when he will open my letter, he will make mention of the night. When he makes mention of the night, see how he mentions it. And the first thing is, there's a sign of Nubuwa on the back of every Nabi. I want you to see if he got it. So this Arab who would accept Islam later on says, I brought the letter. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa as soon as he took it, he asked me, from where are you? As soon as I said, whose letter I'm bringing? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, when my letter reached your master, he showed honor to it. He never tore it. So Almighty Allah will show honor to him. As long as there's goodness written for him, the people will remain in awe of him, will remain the king. The other sahaba were listening the word. He wasn't worried of the word. He was worried, hey, you mentioned the letter. So quickly he said, I pulled out my arrow and with my arrow I started making a mark that this is what he said. But now he's wondering, when he's going to read the letter, what he's got to do with the night? It's daytime. So in the letter, the king of Rome had written a question. He said, O oh, Nabi of the time, or the one who claims to be the Nabi of the time, you have invited me to a Jannah, Arduha Samawatu Al Ard, the worth of which is like the heavens and the earth. So if your paradise is so big, then where is your Jahannam? What a question he asked. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laughed and he said, Subhanallah, when the day comes, where the night goes? Sahaba understood, they were happy with the answer, he was happy about night. Where night came, but he had to have so much conviction that he knew the Nabi of the time will give this answer to the king of Rome. He even knew the answer. Then Nabi Sallallahu said to the man, you tired, go and rest, come tomorrow. As he's going, he said, come. He said, two of your work is already finished. There's only one left here, this year. He said, I went and I saw the sign of Nubu. He would accept Islam, but the king knew it before him. It was one gaze of Almighty Allah that would say, the one who never knew it would get it. And the one who knew it better than me and you, they were going to lose it. That was the past. After that they changed the Bible so much, so much, so much. That if they read in the Bible, they can't see Islam. But Allah Taala to make the proof strong on them was going to make sure that even in today's time, there will be those verses in the Bible that will leave them knowing that this is the truth. And we're just waiting for it. When the Caesar at that time said, By Allah, this man is going to take the land under my feet. 
They also say it in every meeting of them. They're not shocked. When they see they're losing the battle, it's there, but they don't want to believe it. So at that time when I wrote certain verses, I wrote in the Bible, amazing. There are those chapters where Almighty Allah or the Nabi of the time is describing. In the Bible you will find this today. That the Nabi will say, O oh, the Almighty, I wish I can stand in that court of yours towards which thousands and thousands want to come. There is no court in the world like that at the moment except Makkah Mukarram. Then the next sentence will explain it further. He will say that court in which even a bird has found it easy to lay, make its nest, knowing that its life is protected. There is no place in the world where hunting birds is not allowed except in the land of Makkah. So there you will see the birds moving, hunting is not allowed. Then the next word will be that court, that standing in that court is more greater than any other court a thousand times. There is no court in the world where it said if you perform a salah here you get one thousand. But all of that the Christians could have overlooked. They wouldn't have seen it. Then the next sentence in the Bible will be, and when the pilgrims will be coming to your court, they will pass the well, the, the well. They will pass that well which you have taken out for your guests. One well that would serve the guests of the Almighty Allah from the beginning of time till the end, nowhere in the world. That they couldn't have missed. A well that is never ever dry. But even if they miss that one, and commentators comment on every verse of the Bible, it is impossible that the man commentating doesn't know the truth. Then it comes that as they reach the valley of Bakka, in the Bible Bakka will be there. In Quran, Allah Taala never mentioned Makkah as Makkah. He will mention Inna awwal bayti wudi'a lil nas lalladhi bi Bakka. The land of Bakka. Makkah is Bakka, but Quran even kept Bakka. So when I looked at that verse, I was shocked the commentator wrote there. If he wanted to know what is Bakka, what was so hard, he had Google. He just had to press in Google Bakka, it will come there another name for Makkah. Every Christian would have accepted Islam. That shaitani commentator will write location unknown. That one sentence of his shows where the nazar of Allah doesn't fall, Islam is not for you. It is so glaring in your eye, but it is not for you. Then I saw that verse of the Bible, so much they changed, so much. But when one part of the Bible came, we are not having to talk from our own scriptures. We can talk of the sunnah of Nabi Islam about the signs of Qiyamah, it will shock the world. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said a time will come before Qiyamah that you will see the narration is lengthy, I will mention a few points of it. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa made mention of a word you will see when you will see a stick and a shoelace speaking to man. He says by the custom of Allah Qiyamah will not come until you will see that. The narration comes in Tirmidhi. But what a word, other but to Sautihi, when the top of his stick will start talking, and the lace, I ponder of this narration for long, the Arabs had two types of string, one was a thick string, they would use it for the camel, one was a thin string, they would use it for the lace. Allah's Nabi said, a time will come with the stick, the zamana of walking with the walking stick went away. But when he said there will be the stick, it meant the stick will come back. But it wasn't going to be the big stick. It was now going to become a small stick. And he would mention when the top of the stick and the shoelace starts talking to man, by the custom of Allah before that Qiyamah will not come. When the world invented your USB, they could have given it any name they wanted to. Because Muhammad sallallahu said stick, they also had to say USB stick. As soon as they put that on and you connected this with me, this is your shuni. That is your stick. As that went on, the whole world said, Wasadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You think they never saw it? How we saw it? 
The narration will carry on and when the tie of man will start informing man of happenings in the house, what a word also to inform, information, that when your tie will become the markaz, the center of information, whatever is happening at home, you far away, the world would invent hundred things. One of the things they had to invent was they would call it a laptop. Just because when it would sit on the left, the Arabic word is the slap. In Islam you will see the ulama will say, the fakhis don't allow it to be exposed, meaning your ties. Your ties is this area. When that phone was going to be created, they could have put it anywhere in the body. But Allah Tabarukullah would make it that the pocket would come here. It would sit on the tie. Then the tie wouldn't ring, it would go bzzz. Then the man will pull it out, he won't even put it to his ear, he will keep it on his tie. As he presses the body button to see the message, the world will echo was Sadaqa Rasulullah that they will do this also. We got yaqeen on it, so when we see it, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you will see one dish communicating with another dish, how they must have narrated that wording, Sahaba radiallahu anhu, that how does a dish communicate with a dish? We saw the error, suddenly they could have called it anything in the world, the word my Nabi said, Tabakun Atbaq, they were forced to use that same word to call it a satellite dish. Everything we are seeing here by the custom of Allah, we have seen it in the narration. And we have seen how honored this group of people who were loved in this era is in the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu That you are the unique of the era. The only thing is you don't know you unique. But they, those shaitanis, they saw the verses. So the one verse that came in the Bible, where a Nabi of the time says an angel came to me and said, I will show you the end. Let's go to the end. He said, in that I saw that there was waters. And from the water different animals came up. And they also commented, commented when they had to comment. When Britain was formed before that in the world, there wasn't something like that. That one small country can take over the whole world. But how strong Britain became. Then it became the United Kingdom. Then it became the mighty land on which the sun will never set. As the armies went and went in the world, the world was shocked. And Britain at that time would say, our Samlam is the mighty lion. And when they drew the lion of Britain, they even drew it with two hands up and two down on the ground. In that dream, the Nabi will say, the angel showed me the lion that put its two like this. Whoever read those verses of the Bible at that time wrote that the lion is the United Kingdom. At that time they saw the United Kingdom was closing the churches. The world of Europe was coming out of, you learned it in school, they said Europe came out of the dark ages into the ages of light. Some friends asked me in Madrasa, what is Illuminati? I told him in the past this group was also there. But you can't understand it very well. The Persians worship the fire. But the fire they never worship, they worship the devil. And they said light is the fire. Where there is no fire, there is darkness. So they, instead of telling the people, we worship the fire, they would say, we worship light. And they would say, light is knowledge. And in the absence of light means fire, you are in darkness. And everyone in the world will come to the Persians, and he would have the mighty fire in his house. Exactly when you saw the Olympics. When they recreated the Olympics, the main thing of the Olympics was the fire will go high in the sky. I drove past that place where the Olympics were being held. They made it such that the fire could be seen from the highways. The mighty fire that all the athletes will be moving around only in the service of the mighty fire. The fire will be high because when Shaitan said, I will not make sajda, his words was this, I am creator of fire, his creator of sand, his place is at the bottom, my place is at the top. When that man of the Olympics ran with the fire, it was to proclaim that this is the place of the mighty fire in front of man. As that man ran, he was running like how the Statue of Liberty put up that fire. That learned to submit to the fire. The Statue of Liberty was the proclamation of America. 
that this is what we are. In the very Bible, there will be a passage where a Nabi will say, an angel said to me, let me show you the final of evil, a mysterious Babylon. Babylon of the past was a city of evil. But they spoke about a mysterious Babylon that will come at the end of time. In the Bible they read it and their commentators are shy to write that there is only one known statue of immorality for the world. So that verse in the Bible is in the dream, the angel took me to water. On the water he pointed to a huge prostitute. Prostitute means a lady who has sold herself. He said, you see this prostitute, he said, in her hand there was a flame. Mighty and huge, she was sitting on water. One prostitute in the world sits on water, is called the Statue of Liberty. They will even call it Lady Liberty. Liberty means free. A woman who has said, I am free. She got the fire in her hand. At the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, there's chains. Those chains are broken. The breaking of the chains means, if you will submit to the fire, you will become free from the slavery of the Creator. In the past, the Persians would say, there is a Creator of the world, but He is evil. He has not given you fire. Fire is light. He has kept you in darkness. So when Europe went through that age, where United Kingdom was formed, the churches were closed. When they closed the churches in school, you learned, they said, Europe came out of the dark ages into the ages of light. All they meant is, Europe will now come out of religion, darkness, into the era of Satanism. Light was there. First they called themselves Freemasons. Freemasons means a mason. A mason is a man who builds. So what a funny name, they put up a lodge. Someone asked, what is this lodge? He said, it's a Freemason lodge. Freemason means you are a builder. I hired a builder, build masjid for me, you are a poor man. But this group of Freemasons were not poor. They were the most influential in the world. So when someone would ask them, what are you calling yourself a builder for? They would smile and say, we will rebuild the world. What we are going to do in the next few years will shock the entire world. We will put up buildings, we will put up centers, we will put up malls. We will see that the world moves in certain directions, we will control the infrastructure. We are masons. And free masons means we are master builders of the world. The next group will come and they would say openly, we are the Illuminati. Illuminati means we will illuminate the world. Not with knowledge, but with fire, which means light, which means knowledge. That we will make you all educated means secular in mind and Satanist in thought and such that. That the girl will say, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the church. But when she goes to the rave, she's ready to make such that to the fire. So you tell her, why you make this such that? She says, it just feels nice. Some power. That is that. They saw the lion come up in the dream. When I wrote about it, I said, they also wrote it's the United Kingdom. He said, in the dream I saw a bear coming up. When Russia came up, the USSR, they even called themselves the mighty bear. And they were ruthless in the world. At that time, Christians were scared of them. They called them the Red Army. They were also scared who will stop them. They butchered. They also wrote Russia, the USSR. Then he said, in the dream, I saw a leopard coming up. At that time, Germany became strong. Germany's war, they said, was on the Jew. It wasn't on the Jew, but Germany was to bring the Muslim Khilafat into a trap. And when the Khilafat was born in the trap, because of Germany, the entire Khilafat was going to collapse. Germany became the strongest. You learned about Hitler, but it was not only Hitler. They were a mighty force, although they were so small. And unique, their military, they even called it a panther leopard division. Because a leopard and a panther is the same thing. He said, in the dream I saw the leopard. So they even wrote that. Finally, every commentator, Christian, stopped on the last animal. 
And now they reverse the story. Why? Because the last animal that came, in the Bible it comes, I saw an animal which was different. It was like iron its teeth. It was stronger than all the other animals. In front of it, all of them gave in. Then I saw horns coming out on the animal. Then I saw a small horn which was brave and bold, filthy and dirty in stock. At that time, if they wanted to write, they supposed to write after these three superpowers. Was only one more superpower left. And that was called the United Nations. It was called America. It was called a formation of a state that every other country was to told, you cannot make war anymore. We will decide who makes war. All your powers will go away. We will take your powers. Mighty that animal was. And on that animal then he saw horns. And in the center of all the horns was a baby horn. That baby horn was nothing but Israel surrounded by the Arab state. But every Arab state was also going to be a horn for this animal. That that animal will use its own any horn to stab the entire woman. So you will have the Bashar al-Assad created, you will have him created in Jordan, you will have him created in Turkey. You will have horns and horns of evil. Behind it is one filthy animal. And you will have one small horn talking, filthy, filthy. We don't have to believe in this because it's in the Bible. And I can tell you one thing, the people who studied the Bible have yakin that Islam will dominate as the Caesar of Rome at that time period. That by the custom of Allah, this religion is going to take away everything. As they are seeing those days coming, where that horn talks, then another place in the Bible comes that a time will come where the big horn will suddenly turn and start stabbing the animal. That meant is when you will see the Arab state suddenly changing their khiyal and thought. When leaders will be pulled down to the ground, and when the entire world of Islam will go up, it will go so fast, so fast, the mention of one Mehdi will be made. Militaries and militaries will say to the king, we will not do what you want us to do. Suddenly the entire might of the Arab land in one second will be given to Hazrat Mehdi. The entire world of Christians who are waiting will be like that Pope who said, I knew it's going to happen. I am going to follow whether you want to follow, you follow. In one second, in one day, the Dawah of Islam will spread like fire. Everything will happen. In that Bible it comes and they read it. That the angel even said to the Nabi, must I show you the end of the whole story? So he takes a rock and he throws it in the water. The water splashes high. He said like how the splash has come, that statue of immorality will one day come crashing to the ground. He described that statue, he said it will be a, such a statue that her prostitution will be viewed by the people of the world. It will make them intoxicated in her immorality. At that time people would have wondered how can one prostitute make the whole world? How can the whole world see one prostitute? But that prostitute would stand up with the name of Hollywood. And the filthiest and the dirtiest of actions that prostitute would do. She would get paid a million. She would be that woman who Nabi Sallallahu said, I saw that group but I haven't seen them. That the fire, the smell of Jannah will not even be allowed to move past them. Far they will be. They themselves will just be desirous of filth. And they will making the entire world come. Look at my leg, look at my arm, look at my neck, look at my voice. Millions of boys will go wild. Remember the hadith. That you, O oh woman, was seen by my Nabi also in Jannah. You also see. And you said you, you were seen in previous scriptures. And the angel said, when you will see it come crashing to the ground. That will be the time when the Why? Just before that time is our era. Where Rasulullah said, إِذَا فَسَدَ أَهْلُ الشَّامِ فَلَا خَيْرَ لَكُمْ the people of Sham were always the hall of Islam. Nabi Sallallahu said, I saw the angels put the pillars of Islam in the lands of Sham. Even during the crusade, the Muslims of Sham remained Muslim. But the time came after World War where Sham was no longer Sham. Everyone in Sham wanted to be America. 
So everyone's jilbab came out, everyone's kurta came out, everyone's turban came out. The scholars were now looking like not scholars, they were looking like lawyers and politicians. Every government, every scholar, every man, just was America, America, Britain. At that time anyone walked in the lands of Jordan, Palestine, then he would say, what has happened to the people of Sham? He would have said, they have become corrupt, rotten. That word would come, Ida fasada ahlu sham. A time will come where the people of Sham will be corrupt. Fala khayra lakum. At that time, there will be no goodness for the world. Meaning, Islam will be everywhere locked. Nabi Sallallahu said, even in that time, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي منصورين على الحق. My Allah will ensure that a group of my ummah will remain held on the truth. That group, today the world of Sham is waking up. But make so much of shukr to Allah you sitting here. Because when the people of Sham became corrupted, that was the best opportunity for shaitan to make the whole world murtad. One gaze of Allah Tawarukala fell on me and you, because of which we also went in the school, they also indoctrinated us. We also saw the internet. We also saw the dirt, the fal. We read the magazine. We also desired to be American, not Muslim. One nazar of Almighty Allah fell. Suddenly you heard there's a program for youth. You could have also gone to the club. Something told you, go for the program. Later on you will ask why I went. It was because when Allah gave, fell on that uskuf, He said, I am going to follow the truth. And for the Caesar of Rome, Almighty Allah said, my gay is not for you. You are that unique group mentioned in the hadith that even when the people of Sham becomes corrupt, till the last hour, Almighty Allah will keep a group. Mansoorin al haq divine aid will carry on pouring on them. So the whole world will say, give in to your desire, you will say no. You will bleed, it will be hard. At night you also want to see the picture. But it is one thing that my Allah wanted me to submit. When you will do that, the entire world of angels will say, Subhanallah. This is the end of a competition that started at the beginning. The unique thing is in the schools, when they have their contests, when they have their races, the final races are the main races. And it's on the basis of that final race that the entire thing wraps up. So some people don't even come to watch the beginning races. They want to see it when the thing is now hot. Now when the thing is competition is firm, whoever entered in this era entered when it's hot. When shaitaniyat has reached open level, they don't hide anymore to say three mason lodge, illuminati lodge, this lodge, that lodge. They will actually say this is natural, come towards it. You are unnatural. Rasulullah said, Inna deena bada'a gharibhan That how we started at the beginning, it will end. At the beginning, we were the amazing people. Everybody else was normal. People looked at us and said, where you are? He said, a time will come where again it will happen. The whole world will look at you and say, who you? Fatuba lil ghuraba He said, what a wonderful group will be those strangers. That the whole world will try to spoil Islam. They will say, not allowed. We will keep Islam. You are mentioned in the narration. At the end of that ayah, then Allah said, I'll give you the wealth of the world. I will give you the children of the world. You can take everything. Will you make all of them yours? Shaitan would have said, all are mine. The statue is there. It invited the whole world. Come towards success. Give for the fire and I will free you from the worship of a creator. Everyone would see it, everyone would watch the movie, everyone would say, I want to be in America, I want to go to Disneyland, I want to enjoy. They will say, whatever you want, we will give you, we want pictures, we will give you, we want women, we will give you, we want drugs, we will give you. Whatever you want, you want, we will give you. What can Allah give you? At that moment, that servant will say, I will die for my Allah. The next verse, Allah Tawarqala, after mentioning, I'll give you everything. He said, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. But I can say to you, O Iblis, there will be a group of my selected servants, you can try what you want, you will not manage. Wa kafa bi rabbika wakila. 
So the man would ask, Oh Allah, is it possible in such an era of fall to survive? رَبُّكُمُ الَّذِي يُزْجِي لَكُمُ الْفُلْكَ فِي الْبَحْرِ Allah Tabarukullah says, Don't you know that it is your Allah who when a boat enters the ocean, and it's big the ship, but when it enters the ocean, it's small. As it moves through the ocean, any wave could knock it off. And any wave could push it off. And any storm can finish it off. But how that ship moves slowly, slowly, slowly and reaches port. Allah Tawarukla says the reason is because your Allah is steering it. Just like how one one ship is steered to safety. If you ask tonight, O oh Allah, become my captain. Suddenly your ship will start getting safe. Every fitna of the time, and you will just go straight. But where it starts, it starts with a rajulu ala deen khalili. Make a friend who you understand, understands. When you will make that friend, he will make you the unique man of the entire world. He will show you how to walk, he will show you how to run. What you are scared about, he will make you laugh at it. What you really feel is great, he will make you see it small. What you will see is small, suddenly you will start seeing as great. You never liked a turban before, now you will love a turban. You never liked a kurta before, now you will die for your kurta. A woman never wanted the niqab, she will say to her husband, now I will put on the niqab whether you like it or not. Everything will happen. All you need is a friend. When that friend is there, that boy will run up to the place where the doors were opening in the airport. So as they open, Automatic sensor, then they close, then they open, then they close. But he looked at it, looked at it, he wanted to go front, he was scared if I go, it will smash me. So he was the same like the villager who came to the shop. So he saw the elevator opening. When he saw the elevator opening, first time in his life he saw an elevator. So as it opened, he must have thought it's a monster. He only never have a friend. So as he saw a fat auntie with a small basket, she walked in the elevator. Then she turned around, she looked at him, she smiled. As she smiled, this is the elevator closing. So he thought this is like a monster that ate up the poor woman. So he ran and started banging, open, open, open. Everyone is looking at him, he never have a friend. Then that auntie went upstairs. One pretty ten auntie came in and she comes down. So as he's pulling, pulling, suddenly, so his eyes, his mind, so he starts thinking, she went in fat and ugly. Whoa! What happened? So he said, Muhammad! Muhammad said, yes daddy. He said, go bring mommy right now. Why? He never had a friend. Had the friend been there, he said, I'll take you in also. Let's go. No revolution. It is so simple, so simple to walk on Islam. The only problem is, if you are living in the village, you will see things on the village. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa took us to the sky and he said, let me show you everything from above. When you will see it from on top, you will say, oh Allah, I'll die for your Islam. I'll die for you. What made you give me that nazar? That the Caesar of Rome, who knew everything was told, not for you. And the man who knew nothing and who cheated so many times and who... So many times the soul comes for salah, I say, I don't want to come for salah. So many times the soul wake up, say, I don't want to wake up. So many times the soul read Quran, say, I don't want to read Quran. At any minute, Allah Tawarukullah could have said, you don't want to, okay, don't. But still Allah Tawarukullah, like a loving father, said, no, I want you. The man who knew it all was told, I don't want you. And he could not get Islam, although he found the error of Rasulullah and the man who came 1,400 years ago, and who never wanted it, what must be the love of Allah for that individual, who says, even if you don't want it, I want you, come. Again try, again try. You'll fall, never mind, try again, I'll forgive. You'll fall, I'll forgive. May Allah, tabarakullah, bless us all, find a friend. Ar-rajulu ala deeni khali. You will be on the religion of your friend. Look who you make your friend, and the whole world will change. Allah tabarakullah grant us one understanding.